and welcome to Morning Trade with Money Control. I'm Karunya Rao and I'm here to help you navigate the trading day with actionable trading strategies, sectoral trends and most importantly your queries during the course of the show. So please keep commenting on our live feed. We'll have your queries addressed by our technical expert on the show. But before introducing our guests, let's see what the global handover looks like. Europe closed lower on Tuesday as focus in global markets turns to a key US inflation print due today. Stock 600 ended down by six tenths of a percent with tech stocks shedding more than 3% to lead losses. S&P and Nasdaq fall for the third straight day. Dow Jones sheds 0.2% as investors await CPI print for the month of July. Wall Street futures rise. Investors also trying to assess the potential pace of US Fed's monetary policy tightening efforts. Stocks in Asia-Pacific trade lower as investors digest inflation data from China. China's consumer prices increased 2.7% in July, compared with the same period in 2021, the most since July 2020. D Street expected to open in the red as trends in the SGX Nifty indicate a negative start. Stocks in the spotlight today, Bharti Airtels and Sar Technologies, Indian Hotels, Strides Pharma and the Liberal Corn. All right, let's talk technicals of the market with Rajesh Palvia of Access Securities. Morning Rajesh and thank you for joining us today. Let's talk about the trade setup and SGX Nifty which is indicating to a negative start but it's still firmly above 17,500. So tell us what could be in store for us. Yeah, good morning, Karan. Yeah. So uh, overall, uh, if we analyze both the indices, both the indices are in bullish mode, uh, though we are opening uh, slightly uh, on the negative side, but still uh, we feel that, you know, if we continues to hold above 17,500, 17,450 zone in the today's trade, then, uh, you know, again, uh, stock specific sector specific momentum is likely to continue as overall texture for the market is on the bullish side and buy on dip should be the strategy so till uh, uh, if we analyze on the positional perspective also if nifty continues to hold above 17300 which is very important support area on the uh, downside if it's uh, continues to hold these level then you know there is no as such worry in terms of trend of market so buy on dip should be the strategy once we able to cross above 17580 level then possibly it will continue its upward momentum and uh, we can see nifty to move further higher uh, towards 16 17650 to 17700 which is the next target for the nifty even if we on the bank nifty front also 38000 is a very important level if we continues to hold above 38000 level then possibly bank nifty may again you know try to attempt uh, to move further higher and once we crosses above 38,600 level, then possibly next target for bank Nifty is towards 39,000. So both the indices are buy on dips strategy should be uh, used uh, uh, in this uh, uh, gap down opening if uh, at all comes uh, uh, with the global queues. All right. Okay. A buy on dips perhaps then should be something that investors and especially traders should be looking out for in the next few days. But let's talk about individual stocks that could be in the news. I want to start with the Bharti Airtel earnings candidate. Uh, good numbers seen this time around. Revenue was up 22%. EBITDA grew 26% YOY. Margins expanded by a healthy 150 basis points coming in at 50.6%. So overall, uh, I would say largely on uh, expected lines, good numbers. Um, We've seen the stock also breach that important 700 mark last week and it continues to trade above that, Rajesh. Talk to us about Bharti's chart and what could be in store. So, uh, if we analyze the weekly setup for Bharti Airtel, uh, stock managed to give breakout of its uh, falling channel uh, in the previous week itself. Uh, even on the daily chart also, stock has uh, witnessed uh, you know, a strong consolidation uh, and accumulation activity at the lower band. Uh, and price action is suggesting that you know now stock uh, is uh, giving us you know breakout above 700 level. So overall, uh, if we analyze the setup uh, for the Bharti, we feel that you know further more momentum on the higher side uh, we can see in the Bharti in the near term basis also. Upside target uh, uh, is around 740, 745 in the near term basis. One can buy and hold the stock with stop loss of 685. We are expecting that you know positive momentum is likely to continue in Bharti uh, Airtel towards 740, 745. Okay. 
Let's also talk about another earnings candidate, Indian Hotels, uh, which I want to flag off. Good numbers seen there. Of course, there was the low base effect kicking in. This time around, they've seen a profit of uh, 181 crores versus a loss of 301 crores in the same quarter last year. And of course, it was reeling from that COVID-related uh, challenges and pressures. Revenue grew on, uh, uh, on a low base uh, by about 270% year on year, coming in at 1,266 crore rupees. But if we look at the um, technicals of IHCL, what are they telling us? Last one month, again, largely in line with the market momentum, this one has also climbed up a fair bit. So overall, stock is in bullish trend across all time frame. Stock is enjoying its all time high trajectory. Uh, if we analyze uh, a near term setup also, uh, since last three, four trading session, stock is witnessing some supply pressure at around uh, 275 to uh, 76 zone, which is immediate resistance area for Indian hotel. But uh, if we analyze overall setup, stock is continuously forming high top, higher bottom formation, which clearly suggests that, you know, strength is there in the stock. So buy on dip should be the strategy in Indian hotel. If at all stocks comes near to 260 zone is a buying opportunity. Keep stop loss of 255. And we expect, you know, long term target positional target for Indian hotel is around 295 to 305. So one should remain invested in the stock. If uh, any dips comes towards 260 is a buying opportunity for Indian hotel. Okay. All right. What about Zensa Technologies? There could be some action on this counter today. Uh, what we understand is Amansa Holdings has offloaded about 0.3% uh, stake in Zensa via open market transactions. They've sold about 6.02 lakh shares of the company. And after this uh, selling uh, that they've, after this transaction that has done, that has been done, the shareholding stands reduced to 3.56% versus 3.83% earlier. Let's talk about Zensar. Uh, you know, it has seen a downtrend actually last one month when the markets were going up and recovering from, uh, you know, the, the June selling. We saw a, a sustained downtrend here. So tell us what uh, what lies ahead. Yeah, Karan, yeah. So almost it's a ninth consecutive month where, you know, stock is forming lower low formation, which clearly so shows that, you know, stock is in a sustained downtrend and we feel that, you know, further more down move uh, is likely to continue in the stock. So uh, we advise, you know, just avoid at this current juncture because still uh, selling is not absorbed at the current level. Also, we have seen significant selling pressure in the previous session. Also, in on the near term, also stock has broken down its uh, uh, near term support area. Also, so if its stocks uh, slips below 220 level, then we might see further more downside towards. 190 level so uh, our advice would be to avoid at the current juncture let the stock to you know settle down at the lower level and we feel that you know furthermore our down move can continue in the stock okay all right what about dilip bilcon there's some news flow coming in there in terms of order wins they won an order of uh, 1400 crores for uh, gandhi sagar to multi-village water supply scheme this is going to be in madhya pradesh uh, a decent size of the order, I'd say 1400, and there could be some reaction on the stock price today. Uh, what do you foresee for Dilip Bilcon? How is the technicals placed? So, overall, setup for Dilip Bilcon is also negative. A series of lower top, lower bottom formation is uh, taking place in the stock. But uh, since last uh, uh, three, four weeks, we have seen you know some uh, recovery from the lower level from its oversold zone. So in the near term setup, if we analyze for the near term setup point of view, uh, if its stock continues to hold above 232 level, which is very important for this near term trend, if it continues to hold above 232 level, then possibly some pullback action towards 260 we can see in the near term basis. So those who are already holding the position, keep a stop loss of 232 at the current juncture for upside target of 260.65. Okay. The last stock on our list today as far as uh, stocks and news is concerned, their strides pharma. USFD has completed the inspection of their facility based in Singapore and there are zero form 483 uh, that have been issued. So uh, some uh, relief coming by perhaps for investors and for the company actually. L talk to us about strides pharma and how are the technicals uh, placed? So since last four or five weeks, stock is consolidating very narrow range. And uh, even if we analyze overall setup, stock is in bearish zone. 
so until the stock not crosses about 355 level which is very important uh, stock is likely to remain further in the consolidation only on the other hand if its stock breaks below uh, 330 level then we might see you know continuation of downtrend also in the stock so overall uh, our advice would be to avoid at the current juncture only buy above 355 only if it's crosses then level, that level then only uh, try to buy the stock for further pullback action okay Rajesh, request you to stay on with us. I want to touch base with my colleague Jash Kriplani from Money Control to talk about fund flows. Uh, Amphi numbers came out Monday evening. Uh, the big question is, are the volatile markets taking toll on investor sentiment? Because the net inflow in equity mutual funds is down 42% month on month in July, coming in at uh, 8,898 crore rupees. Jash is here. Jash, thank you for joining us. What has led to the steep outflow in, uh, in equity funds? Yeah, uh, good morning, Karunia. So, you know, the outflows has largely come because of, you know, markets actually uh, doing well in July. So investors have, uh, you know, as you would understand, taken profits off from the market. You know, last few months have been quite volatile, uh, you know, but July has been a good period for markets. Oil prices came off as well and FI buying has also happened. So this has actually, uh, you know, come across as a relief for several investors. And that's the reason why, uh, you know, net inflows have come off because investors have actually uh, tried to take advantage of this rally and book their profits. Okay. What about debt funds? Uh, how has money moved there? So as far as debt funds are concerned, uh, you know, we have seen that, you know, net flows were about 4,000 crore, uh, you know, the clear indication as far as flows are concerned in debt funds is that the money is moving towards shorter duration funds uh you know ultra ultra short funds as well as money market funds uh have seen sizable inflows this clearly indicates that you know investors anticipate uh, bond yields hardening further and they don't want to take the risk of mark to market losses on those uh, categories right because longer duration funds would actually see higher impact of mark to market i mean mark to market impact if yields were to rise uh, and this uh, you know as you would understand uh, rbi rate hike has also led to those concerns that you know yields could go up further from here and that's why that movement has money has clearly moved towards shorter duration categories okay what about NFOs? Because they are getting launched uh, and quite a few of them are getting launched after the lifting of the ban. How have the flows been there? What's the interest like? Uh, yeah, so you're right. I mean, there have been a lot of NFOs now coming, uh, you know, after the ban got lifted by SEBI. Uh, so interestingly, last month, two NFOs closed. One was Edelweiss Focused Equity Fund and the other one was White Oak FlexiCap fund uh, so you know they got uh, you know between them about 1100 crore of flows uh, what it seems to indicate is that you know now nfos are likely to get bunched together because uh, several fund houses were waiting for their turn to launch nfos so suddenly we are having a situation where there will be several nfos in the market which will be competing with each other for investor flows so this will definitely dampen the inflows that they can gather right so we should uh, most likely see nfos uh, you know seeing limited flows in the coming months okay all right what is the trend indicating to judge going forward uh, when it comes to sips and investing especially in equity funds how are things looking what are you picking up uh, so as far as sips are concerned you know uh, that is the space where you know, industry has seen steady flows coming in. Uh, you know, even in July, the there was a very marginal dip in SIPs. The number is still holding steady about 12,100 crore. Uh, so, you know, from there, we should, uh, the industry should continue to see flows coming in and that should continue to, uh, you know, be one end of the industry that uh, will bring in steady flows uh, you know, irrespective of whatever else is happening in the markets and hmm. other categories. All right. Thank you so much for uh, chatting with us and talking to us about the fund flow action and what perhaps could lie ahead as well.
Okay, back to the markets and back to Rajesh once more. Uh, we have a lot of queries that Rajesh, we would like you to address. The first question is from Parth Chaudhary. He wants your view on Indian oil. How are you uh, assessing the technicals of an Indian oil? And if you could tell us uh, if, if the momentum can continue and it could gain some strength because it has clawed back to those mid-June levels. But from here on, do you see some consolidation or could there be a good build up and good pick up from here? So uh, overall, if we analyze, the stock is in still in uh, you know bearish zone, and uh, the kind of recovery which we have seen uh, in the stock from the lower level is still not uh, sufficient to you know take out from its oversold territory. Uh, so we feel that you know seventy eight to eighty is a uh, important resistance area for uh, IOC, and uh, we feel that you know until uh, stock not crosses those level, it will remain in the consolidation only. So seventy rupees is the major support area on the downside. And uh, 80 rupees is the resistance area, so it will remain for uh, uh, consolidation for some more time. And once uh, stock manages to cross above 80 level, then some significant buying action or you know some more pullback action we can expect. But as of now, we are expecting uh, stock to remain in the range only. Okay, all right. The next question is from Naveen, and he wants your uh, view on Mahindra and Mahindra. This one has only seen a one-way up move, I think, last four five months from March lows of uh, 680, 690 rupees. The stock has nearly doubled and right now I think it shut shop on Monday at uh, 1275. Do you think it's a good time to dip in or should he wait for some dip to happen or some consolidation to come by to buy at a better price point? Very strong momentum is uh, there in m and &M and we uh, advise to remain uh, uh, invested in the stock uh, as overall setup for the stock is in bullish zone. The strong breakout which we have seen a couple of months back, still buying action is there at the higher level also. The kind of addition we have seen in last couple of uh, weeks, uh, we feel that you know this uh, momentum is continue, uh, likely to continue further. 1350, 1400 could be the possible target uh, in coming weeks. So uh, hold the position, keep uh, trailing the stop loss at the higher level. Now the stop loss for trading as well as for the short term investment is at around 12, 20 level. And our target is around 1400 in the uh, coming weeks. Okay, well, 1400 target encouraging one. I'm sure our viewers are taking note of that. Next question is uh, from Santosh Kumar. He wants your view on Tata Steel. And this one, uh, good momentum seen, especially last two weeks, it has consistently traded above that 100 rupees mark. Tell us what lies ahead. So some recovery has been witnessed in the metal space from the oversold zone. And we feel that in looking at the setup for Tata Steel now, stock is trading above 50 day moving average, almost trying to negotiate with its 100 day moving average, which is lying at around 110, 112. So once stock crosses above 112 level, then possibly next target for Tata Steel at around 120, 25 zone. So those who are already holding the position from the lower level can uh, hold the position. Now, uh, stop loss uh, for holding the Tata, position, uh, Tata Steel position is at around 102. And we are expecting some positive momentum is likely to continue in the stock in the coming uh, trading sessions. Okay. Next stock we want you to focus on is uh, Infosys. Ishan has written to us. He is asking if the share price is set to go up from the current levels or not. Infi, uh, well, the stock last three months, very, very inconsistent. It has seen its, its uh, uh, you know, uh, bit of uh, bouts of uh, uptick, but it hasn't been able to really sustain them. Now that it's, you know, above those three month, uh, you know, highest level in the last three months, what do you think lies ahead? 1620 is where it shut shop. Uh, what kind of a momentum or a move do you forecast? So overall, uh, uh, the IT space has shown a decent recovery from uh, their you know uh, recent low. Uh, in the Infosys uh, stock, managed to cross its you know uh, uh, 50 day, 100 day moving average, which clearly shows that you know some some strength is coming back to the stock. Uh, though stock has witnessed a strong correction in the recent past, but uh, the kind of recovery we have seen in last couple of weeks is clearly suggesting that, you know, further more upside we can see in the stock towards 1660, 1670. So uh, if he is holding the position, uh, hold the position with stop loss of 1570, which is immediate uh, support area. So keep a stop loss of 1570. We are expecting further more upside towards 1670 level in the coming trading sessions. Okay. 
What about Sumitomo Chemicals? How is it looking for the long term? Uh, Narendra Pandey has uh, sent us a message. And uh, if you could talk to us, because last three months, the stock has seen very divergent moves. Last one month chart is also looking fairly inconsistent. So what is the trend and what does it tell you? So for uh, this month, uh, we have seen almost six and a half percent kind of rally in the stock. And overall, we have seen, you know, some uh, uh, traction is coming back to the chemical space also. Now looking at the overall setup, uh, stock is in bullish territory. And uh, on the monthly basis or monthly chart also, if we analyze uh, 505, 510 is the immediate resistance area. Once uh, stock manages to surpass those level, then possibly stock can move further higher towards 540 also. So our advice would be to hold the stock. Uh, even in the dips also, one can add the stock. Uh, stop loss for holding the position is at around 460. Upside target is 510. Once the stock crosses 510, then possibly next target would be around uh, 540. Okay. The, uh, uh, the next query we'd like to take is from... Uh... David and he wants your view on Repco Home Finance. Good uptick seen last one month from its uh, you know recent close of 1, 127, 128 rupees. Right now firmly above 150. Do you think it can sustain this and build on gains? So it's, since last uh, uh, 10 to 15 trading session, stock is uh, trading in very uh, uh, small trading range. Like you know, uh, it's moving in very uh, narrow range. Uh, looking at the setup, uh, the price action is required, which is uh, breakout uh, for this consolidation range at around 168 level. So we feel that, you know, if uh, someone wants to buy on the breakout, uh, wait for 165, 168 breakout, then possibly stock may show a good uh, sharp up move towards 180, 85 zone. So our advice would be if already holding, then keep a stop loss of 148. And on the breakout of 165, he can add further more position for upside target of 180. Okay. What about you, Rajesh? What stocks have you kept on your watch list and perhaps can recommend our viewers also to take note of? So, uh, Karanya, I have three stocks. One is uh, one is HDFC Bank. Uh, that is from large cap uh, private bank. A stock uh, has given a breakout of its 200-day moving average in the previous trading session. And looking at the setup, uh, we feel that, you know, HDFC Bank can move further higher towards 1500 level. One can buy and hold this stock with a stop loss of 1438. Another stock is BEL. Uh, strong uptrend uh, we have witnessed in the BEL. And the kind of uh, traction we are seeing in the defense space, uh, we feel that, you know, BEL is likely to continue further upward momentum towards uh, uh, 295, which is the immediate target we are expecting. Keep a stop loss of 276. Uh, third stock is Coal India. Very strong uh, buying action we have seen in the uh, previous trading session. And the stock is now sustained above 210 levels. So we feel that, you know, Coal India may uh, scale up further higher towards 225. So one can buy and hold Coal India with stop loss of 210 for upside target of 225. All right. Thank you so much for flagging off your recommendations as well. And thank you for joining us. Great chatting with you as always. With that, we're going to wrap it up right here on Morning Trade. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. Markets with Santo and CJ comes up next.